Hi, I'm Q from On Balance, and in this series of videos, I'm going to be talking about calcium nodules on swimming pool plaster. I hope that you've never seen a calcium nodule on a swimming pool surface. But if you do, you need to know what it is, how it happened, who caused the problem, and whether or not it can be fixed. The little white growths that you see in these pictures are crystalline white calcium carbonate growths. In cement industry terminology, they're a form of efflorescence. In the pool industry, they're called calcium nodules. They're generally small, from pencil eraser to dime-sized, and are usually white unless the calcium crystal traps dirt, iron, copper, or other substances in the matrix and acquires a color. These growths are annoying, but actually, they're not the real problem. They're the visible symptom of an underlying plaster defect. In order to understand the mechanics of calcium nodule formation, let's review a little bit about both the plastering process and also the chemistry of filling a newly plastered pool. This illustration is a cutaway view of a pool. The blue on top is the pool water and the white band across the middle represents the plaster. The plaster is usually around a half an inch thick. The gray speckled layer beneath the plaster represents the gunite shell of the swimming pool. Of course this is not drawn to scale in our illustration. The shell is usually around six inches thick and contains a grid of rebar reinforcement rods embedded inside. The brown at the bottom represents the dirt behind the pool shell. One of the critical parts of the plastering process is bonding the plaster to the substrate. In new pool construction, the intentionally rough gunite shell is hard but not yet chemically inert. As plaster is applied, there's both a mechanical bond, meaning that the plaster paste physically flows into and interlocks with the porous gunite surface, and also a chemical bond, meaning that the chemical processes in the new plaster and the gunite shell form a chemical connection. For this reason, it's possible, but actually somewhat unusual, to have bonding problems in new plaster pools. Bond failure in nodules usually occur in pools that have been replastered. When a pool is replastered, the old plaster may be chipped away, exposing the old gunite. However, the gunite is chemically inert by this time, and it's unlikely that applying a new plaster to the old shell will form a chemical bond. Therefore, the prep crew intentionally chips and scores the surface to ensure that a good physical mechanical bond with the fresh plaster may be formed. Alternatively, the new plaster may be applied directly over the old plaster. This is cheaper than chipping out all the old plaster, but more difficult to successfully perform since they are then relying on the soundness of the old plaster and the lack of contaminants on the surface that could prevent successful bonding. Some plasters will actually use a bonding agent, a kind of glue that sticks well to the old plaster and forms a layer that the new plaster can lock into. When the newly plastered pool is first filled with water, chemical reactions occur which convert some of the surface plaster from soft calcium hydroxide to harder calcium carbonate. As that process occurs, some of the softer calcium hydroxide dissolves into the pool water and after reacting with the water it precipitates into a fine white powder called plaster dust. Dusting may occur for a period of 7 to 10 days after filling and the dust is brushed and filtered until gone. Now with these facts in hand, let's look at one type of plaster defect called bond failure. This is where the process of locking the new plaster into the substrate doesn't work right. It can happen if the plaster sets too quickly, if the shell is not wet enough before plastering, if foreign substances are on the shell, or any of a number of similar factors. If this happens, an air void or pocket forms in the failed area. Voids may be very small, on the order of fractions of an inch, or they may extend over vast portions of the newly plastered surface. As the separated plaster lifts, minuscule cracks form between the void and the pool water. Eventually, water works its way back and fills the void. 
Once the void contains water, the same reactions that form plaster dust in new pools will take place and the dissolved calcium hydroxide will eventually make its way to the outer surface of the pool plaster. If the crack in the plaster is too big, the reactant fluid will simply squirt out and dissolve into the pool water. If the crack is too small, or if the fluid moves very slowly, the hydroxide may harden inside the crack and actually plug it up. But if the fluid exits the crack just right, it can harden right at the exit point and this is how a nodule is formed. If the nodule is formed on the bottom of the pool, it will usually be round. But if it forms along a crack, it may be long, skinny, and crack-shaped. Sometimes gravity causes the nodule to form in a dripping or stalactite shape, dripping down from the crack. Although some have claimed that calcium nodules are related to poor water chemical maintenance, this is simply untrue. Bond failure is a plaster application error. There is nothing you can do with pool water chemistry maintenance to cause bond failure and nodule formation. Nor is there any way that you can stop nodules from forming by manipulating the water chemistry. The nodule is a symptom of an underlying plaster defect. The actual defect is the bond failure or separation. And the cause is a failure on the part of the plastering crew to properly prepare the surface and apply the new plaster. In part two of this video series, we'll take a look at other kinds of nodules that form in other ways besides bond failure.